Yusuf and I are super excited to uh, present to you all. We are going to be talking about what we call the new era of data analysis powered by AI. Uh, at Snowflake, we've been loosely referring to this as talk to your data, because that's essentially the new paradigm that we're enabling. Um, we will be talking about two products we have in this space. Uh, Snowflake Copilot, which went into uh, public preview mid-April this year, and is going into general, general availability very soon. The second product that we actually announced during this summit that we're extremely excited to talk about is Cortex Analyst. By means of an introduction, uh, I mentioned my name is Peter Groven. I'm here with uh, Yusuf. Um, I am one of the uh, folks on the product management side here at Snowflake, focused on Snowflake Copilot and Cortex Analyst. Uh, and Yusuf is leading the, leading the engineering team, focused on this, the, those two products. In terms of an agenda, uh, we'll start with quickly framing the opportunity that we see with generative AI and how generative, generative AI can really be used to democratize data access. We'll then briefly talk about Snowflake Copilot, uh, the capabilities is it has today um, and, and what you can expect from it in the future. We'll focus on uh, hopefully most of the time showing you a live demo of Snowflake Copilot. Um, Yusuf will then talk about text to SQL, which is really the core underlying technical challenge that we've needed to solve uh, to make Snowflake Copilot work. And we'll then shift gears and talk about Cortex Analyst, which is this new product that essentially enables business users to talk to their data, which we're very excited about. Let's dive in. So talk to your data. Uh, we've heard from so many of you uh, that this is a key opportunity that you see uh, and where we can really harness the power of generative AI. By using generative AI, we can essentially enable a workflow where people can access to data and ask data questions without having to write SQL queries themselves. We think that this can massively increase the amount of users that can directly access data insights, which we're very excited about. And two opportunities that we see underneath that are, we think we can massively boost the productivity of existing Snowflake users. So think about SQL developers, data analysts, um, and the second opportunity is geared towards business users. We think we can enable an experience for them where they can ask questions uh, and essentially self-service uh, their data insights. For both of these groups of users, we have different products. Snowflake Copilot is geared towards the uh, data analysts uh, and SQL developers. It's a, a feature that's available in a Snowsite UI. Uh, today in worksheets and notebooks, but it's becoming available in more uh, services. Um, and then Cortex Analyst, which is geared towards uh, business users as the end users. Um, it's an API that allows app developers to build apps where business users can chat with their data. One key thing to point out here is that with Snowflake Copilot, there is always a user in the loop. And that means that the SQL queries that we generate will ultimately be executed by the end user. That allows us to get away with a precision that is high, um, but we know at the end of the day that there likely is an expert that's in the loop and actually decides whether or not the SQL query is correct and achieves what they want to achieve. With Cortex Analyst, since we're serving business users, that's not the case. And so the precision requirements, so the SQL query that we generate, those requirements are much higher. And we wanna make sure that we're very, very confident that those answers are correct. Because we know that business uh, users will start to make business decisions based on that. We'll talk about how we enable that in Cortex Analyst uh, in a second, but essentially we're introducing a new concept there called semantic model. Now at the heart of both of these features are our core ABI uh, principles. Efficiency, ease of use, and trustworthiness. So efficiency because your data is already stored in Snowflake, um, and your data doesn't need to move in any way uh, to, for you to start using these uh, features. Ease of use, because the underlying models that are being used here are uh, fully managed by Snowflake. We take care of uh, everything and these capabilities just work out of the box. And then finally, we put a lot of em emphasis on making sure that the answers that we generate are trustworthy and are continuously investing in ways to show to the user uh, when they can actually trust the answer versus when they may want to validate whether the answer is correct with other people in the organization. Let's start with talking about Snowflake Copilot. So Snowflake Copilot, as I mentioned, is really here to help accelerate the workflow of a data analyst. And if you look at their workflow today, 
It often involves writing complex SQL queries. Um, this can be time consuming and is uh, challenging. Of this audience here, how many of you do write SQL queries on a daily basis? So it's roughly half. So we know that that is a very important use case to nail. Then there is onboarding yourself into new data sets. So maybe it's a data set you haven't seen before and you're trying to even understand how it can be used, what tables exist. Um, inside tables, what are the columns? Are there specific dimension or measure columns? Those types of questions. Doing that today feels unintuitive and requires many different types of steps. Then there is understanding and improving existing queries. So maybe there's a query that was written by somebody else in the organization and you're trying to understand what it does without executing it. Or maybe you have a query and you would like to see if there's a way to optimize it for performance. Finally, uh, as you all know, Snowflake has so much to offer and all of this is um, described in our documentation. But finding those insights in our documentation can often feel like a lot of work and typically requires you constantly having to have multiple windows open. We think there's an opportunity to streamline that workflow too. So this is where Snowflake Copilot comes in. And this is first and foremost a breakthrough SQL assistant. We want to make it easy for you to explore your data sets. We want to make it extremely easy to generate SQL queries uh, by simply asking questions in natural language. We want to make it very easy for you to learn about Snowflake by simply asking questions. And Snowflake Copilot has access to Snowflake documentation directly. And then very importantly, uh, the underlying models that are being used to generate all of this are hosted securely in Snowflake to make sure that your data never leaves the Snowflake security perimeter. We continue to see this as a huge differentiator and that's how we've built these capabilities from the ground up. It also uses Snowflake RBAC. So any question that you ask will only uh, ever be answered based on data that you have access to based on the role that you're currently using. And finally, we are using universal search under the hood, uh, which is an extremely powerful um, uh, tool that is available in the Snowset UI. And we're using that to determine based on your question, what are the objects in Snowflake that are most relevant for answering that question. That allows us to deal with databases and schemas that may have many, many hundreds of tables and basically don't sel select to only the most relevant results. Snowflake Copilot has been available in worksheets, which will go into general availability very soon. Um, it's also available in notebooks now as part of the public preview. So both of these interfaces, you can start to play around with Snowflake today, the Snowflake Copilot today. Now, I talked a lot about this already, but actually let's show this in a live demo. Um, perfect, so what you can see here is uh, a worksheet in Snowsight. And on the right side, you can see the Copilot side panel. And we've selected in this case uh, a data set that has information about US patents. And so we can go ahead and ask a question like, tell me about this data set. You can see when you ask a question like this, uh, Copilot will start to analyze the selected schema. And based on that, it starts to give you an explanation in natural language of what's available in the selected schema. So you can see that it starts to describe each individual table and the underlying columns that are available. And this is an easy way for you to familiarize yourself with the data set. Now, if you're curious about what types of questions you can ask, you can simply ask Snowflake Copilot. When you do so, and this is actually very cool, um, Snowflake Copilot will go ahead and on the fly generate a set of questions that you can ask of your data if you're looking for uh, inspiration and ins uh, uh, on how you can generate insights. Maybe you're actually curious to uh, see if Snowflake Copilot can write a couple example queries for you. You can simply ask that too. And from our own experience, we've seen that these questions can actually really drastically accelerate how quickly you can familiarize yourself with a particular data set. And as you can see here, any of the SQL queries that we generate, you can easily add and run in a worksheet, which we'll do in a second. Now, maybe you're curious if your data set has any measure or dimension columns. Similarly, even though this hasn't explicitly been defined in Snowflake, our system is smart enough to recognize these types of things. You can see it was able to identify that there is uh, one measure column in this particular data set. Now, moving on to generating SQL queries. So since this is a data set about uh, US patents, why don't we ask a question like, who are the top five contributor of patents uh, of all time? 
By simply typing in this question, we will go ahead, analyze the, uh, the data set, and then based on the data set, we uh, generate a SQL query that should give you the answer to the question. Not only that, we also explain to you what the thought process was that led to us generating the SQL query. And then once we've generated it, you can simply hit the run button to get that inside. Isn't that pretty cool? Let's do one more question and then we can, uh, we can move on to the, uh, to the next couple slides. So for example, which country contributed the most patents? Another question that can be answered based on the SQL query. Again, we go ahead and explain to the user what the thought process is and then finally write a SQL query that provides the answer. Simply hit a button and you can, uh, you can run it. Maybe finally, let's do one documentation question. Right. Um, so for example, you've heard all about Snowflake Cortex, but maybe you're not super familiar with a jet. You can now simply ask Snowflake Copilot. It will look up in Snowflake documentation what the most recent answer is to that question. Not only give you the answer, but also reference uh, the documentation article. So you can click into that if you want to learn more about a particular topic. We're obviously only scratching the, the surface here, but we're extremely excited about how Snowflake Copilot can help accelerate the workflow. And this is going to continue to be a big area of investment for us. Okay, um, I'm going to uh, quickly uh, hand it off to Yusuf, uh, who's going to be talking about the core underlying technical challenge that we needed to solve to make this work, which is text to SQL. Thank you, Peter. Hi, everyone. So uh, text SQL is a problem has seen a lot of enterprise buzz lately. So uh, you might be thinking, isn't this a solved problem already? Uh, right now, to, you can uh, get uh, fake data fr from a CSV file and share it with uh, the Gen AI tool of, of your own and then get uh, pretty impressive demos running pretty easily. But the reality is uh, the promising results that you get from demos with text to SQL is just the tip of the iceberg. Real use cases require real-world data, and real-world data has real schemas that are really messy. And uh, this is uh, uh, schemas that are uh, across thousands of tables, th tens of thousands of columns. There can be a lot of details in things like column names that, that is sort of buried under organizational uh, history. You can have obscurely named columns. You can have a rev one column that's your old way to compute revenue. And maybe the rev three column is the new way to compute revenue, but you haven't sort of settled down on that with your finance department. So rev two is the actual way to go, but the LLM cannot know that. So if you're building a text to SQL solution, you need component that goes in and introduces these concepts to your LLM system as well. So this is a problem that's uh, at the core hard as a technology problem, but it becomes even messier because of organizational complexity. So how do we solve this? We basically solve this by a, a, a relentless focus on perfecting the system by, by iterating on both core to text, text to SQL capabilities and also introducing components that will just make our lives easier. Uh, we did that uh, uh, ever since we launched uh, Copilot to uh, private preview in November. And just to go over a few of the core components in, in, in this journey, we actually started uh, from optimizing for uh, a data set called Spider. Spider is a public benchmark that is commonly used in ac academic circles. But th this is basically tying your shoelaces in the marathon that is text to sql uh, The first sort of big milestone for, uh, for us was adding universal search as a service behind the scenes for co-pilots. Uh, this is basically a retrieval system that, given a question, gives you access to all the relevant data objects. So it, it does two things. It first narrows the problem down to a much simpler problem than getting access to all the schema. So it makes the LLM's job a bit easier. It also allows us to customize our output because again, universal search has access to all your metadata. The second step was we actually started developing our own uh, eval data set that mirrors the complexities that we see in real world data. And this allowed us to have a flywheel that, uh, and okay. have a hill climb on the, the real challenges of text to SQL much, much more uh, uh, reliably. And this is an ongoing process. We have our eval metrics updated, and we are adding more and more training data, improving our system along the way. 
we, we tend to release a, a new model update almost every two weeks. And this is, again, this has been an ongoing process. Uh, finally, we have added uh, a top tier uh, large language model for, through our partnership with Mistral AI, uh, Mistral Large to our system, which allowed us to add in conversational capabilities that Peter was talking about. So things like documentation help and, and, and data onboarding, data exploration related questions. And this allowed us to get a system that, that is basically top of the line for text to SQL and it allows new capabilities as well. Finally, where do we go from here is, uh, again, you know, retrieval and, and uh, having access to real world data in terms of evaluation and, and using a top tier LLM can get us to a system that is uh, better than GPT-4 in terms of its text to SQL capabilities. But uh, organizational complexity and how to communicate to the system basically becomes the core of uh, how to provide a product for business users. And that's where Cont uh, Cortex Analyst comes in. We, we have developed a new technology that essentially allows us to do this, and Peter is going to talk about that next. Thank you so much. Um, I'll quickly skim over this slide, but we've had tons of positive feedback on Snowflake Copilot so far, which has been super exciting. Uh, we've seen a ton of adoption. So there's over 2,100 customers that are using this on a weekly basis, which is very, very cool. Now, in terms of what's next for Snowflake Copilot, we're going to keep iterating on the quality of the system. So we're making text to sql better is a continued area of investment for Snowflake. We're also going to make Snowflake Copilot available uh, across more services in um, Snowsight. Um, we want to expand our capabilities to also support Python. So we obviously are really well positioned to do an amazing job at Snowpark, Python, and Streamlit. And then finally, we're working really hard to make Snowflake Copilot available to all Snowflake customers in terms of uh, cloud region availability. OK, um, we're going to skim through this quickly because of the, uh, the time limit that we have. But let's talk about Cortex Analyst. So this is a brand new capability that we actually announced during Summit uh, basically two days ago. Snowflake Copilot, uh, 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 Cortex uh, Analyst comes in, uh, um, in, a, in an existing workflow where business users are looking for data insights. And what we're seeing is that these users know the business extremely well, uh, but writing SQL queries is not part of their workflow. And so they often spend time looking at BI dashboards that may be out of date, uh, that are not very flexible. And because of that, they may have to reach out to other people in the organization to get data insights. Data teams, on the other hand, uh, have to maintain these BI dashboards, which can be very time consuming. Um, it's also challenging because they may receive a lot of inbound uh, questions from business users. And typically, uh, organizations are set up in a way where there are many more business users than there are uh, data engineers. And so this doesn't really scale. This is where Cortex Analyst comes in. And what we're really trying to do is create a self-service data analytics workflow for the business user. So, Using Cortex Analyst, which is an API, you can now easily build a conversational chat app, for example, using Streamlit. And by specifying a semantic model upfront, make sure that the answers that Cortex Analyst provides are extremely precise. And that also means that if we're not confident that we can generate the answer, we will let the business user know. Now, how does that work? Essentially, the business user can ask a question in natural language, our system will then determine whether that question is answerable based on the semantic model. If it is, it will go ahead and generate SQL query and execute that and show the business user the final result. If it isn't, we will decline the question, explain to the business user why we're declining it, and always show a set of suggested questions to make sure that they don't get blocked in their workflow. Cortex Analyst is available uh, in Streamlit in Snowflake. So that makes it extremely easy to now build a chat app that uses Cortex Analyst in literally a few dozen lines of code. Um, and then you can easily deploy it using Streamlit in Snowflake. We're using a semantic model um, to get to the uh, precision that I talked about. So this is a new concept that roughly doubles the text to SQL precision, which is a huge deal. And essentially, you can think of the semantic model as a lightweight mechanism to do uh, uh, data modeling, so determine what are measure columns, what are dimension columns, what are filters you want to define, but also do some uh, capturing of semantic understanding. So kind of bridging the gap between the vocabulary that the business user uses 
and the underlying database schemas, which often tend to be messy. Now let's quickly show you a live demo um, to put this in action. So what you can see here is a Streamlit app that is powered by Cortex Analyst using a semantic model that has information about products and revenue. So you can go ahead uh, and ask a question like, what questions can I ask? This then gets sent to the, uh, the system and we will first determine if this is a question that is answerable. In this case, we determined that this was an onboarding question and so we explained to the user what is available in terms of uh, information in the semantic model and suggest a couple questions that they can go ahead and ask. Now let's go ahead and ask, actually ask a business question like, which product generated the most revenue overall? In our system, we then go ahead, um, first tell the user how we interpreted their question. So that's what you can see up top. And we do that to make sure that there's no confusion about the question that we are actually answering. We then gen generate a SQL query, which you may or may not want to expose to the business user. We then execute the SQL query, and then finally, there, have, there you have the answer. And essentially, you can see here, this is truly a self-service workflow where the business user is now on block to ask any open-ended data question of your data without having to interact with anybody in the organization. Okay, um, Yusuf, I'm gonna keep us on time. Okay. And unfortunately, we have to uh, kind of break the demo here. Uh, isn't that very cool? Great. Okay, so in terms of how you can get started with Cortex uh, Analyst, um, I mentioned that it will soon be in a public preview. Today it is in a private preview. If you would like to have access, let us know. Reach out to your sales engineer and they can help you get set up. Once you have access, uh, essentially you would create a semantic model for your particular use case. Um, once you've done that, you can test that locally to make sure that the answers that it generates are as expected. You can then go ahead and build and deploy an application, which could be a simple Streamlit app. And then once you've done that, you can give your business users access and voila, they can start interacting with this conversationally and you don't really have to kind of uh, um, interfere with their workflow anymore. Okay, um, quick summary. Snowflake Copilot currently public preview will be gener general availability very soon. Cortex Analyst private preview will be in public preview very soon. Thank you so much for your uh, time and attention. Thank you. Thank you.